This is a couple of things that we should do here. Here is um, let's start with uh, Trump calling on China. Uh, oh, we had that. That was yesterday's right. Uh, so yesterday, Donald Trump calls on China to investigate Joe Biden. And again, this is uh, that that comment. We mentioned this yesterday on the show when Trump came out and said, uh, called on uh, Zelensky to investigate Biden, calls on uh uh, Chi to investigate um, Biden, I think is his way of saying, I cannot cover this up. I've already called on him uh, because it was reported today that, in fact, there was a call where Biden came up with Xi. Um, and this is the way that I inoculate myself from these charges. It's not illegal. I'm saying it publicly. Really, in many respects, like, hey, Russia, if you're listening, get me those 30,000 emails. Uh, but this is retroactively covering his steps. Here is, uh, we got a couple of clips on this. Marco Rubio today responding to it. Uh, needling the press, knowing that you got Do you think it's okay for President Trump to ask China to launch an investigation of Joe Biden and Hunter Biden? I don't know, but that's a real request for him just uh, needling the press, knowing that you guys were going to get outraged by it. Uh, he's gotten, he's pretty good at getting everybody fired up, and he's been doing that for a while, and the media responded uh, right, on, uh, right, on, right on task. But you're one of the loudest critics of China and its human rights abuses. I mean, is it okay for him to ask to say that? I don't think it's a real request. I think, again, I, t I think he did it to gig you guys. I think he did it to provoke you to ask me and others and get outraged by it. Um, like I said, I mean, he, he plays it like a violin and everybody falls right into it. But that's not a real request. Um, we know it was reported that Trump brought this up in a call to, to Xi and uh, in June. It's according to CNN, Trump raised Biden with G in June in a call housed in the highly secure server. Now, I don't know why they're hiding that. Maybe there was a lot of other things, but it's like get smart. This gets that to that question as to whether, you know, like what it would take for a certain sector of Republicans to uh, leave Trump. I think to a certain extent, um, the idea that this trade war is a function of get me Joe Biden stuff or I'm just digging. I'll just pay off my my farmers. But uh, here is um, Peter Navarro. He is Trump's um, uh, trade policy advisor uh, on with Jim Scuto on CNN Newsroom. And Jim Scuto, I uh, maybe I'm not pronouncing his name right, um, is hinting at like, what's the deal here? Uh, like, what's the connection between this trade war and Joe Biden and Donald Trump's uh, determination to get some goods on Joe Biden? He said it was an internal issue, and he encouraged, uh, he encouraged uh, um, both sides so, to refrain from... So what, what's the point here, Jim? I'm asking you, are you disappointed the president hasn't I'm made never a public disappointed in, in my support president. of the I'm the never protests. disappointed in okay. my president. When you heard the president yesterday call on China to investigate an American, you and I have spoken multiple times about how China breaks international law. Time out here. Is this is like, okay is this like an, an interrogation okay? here? It's like I, I feel like I'm at like Adam Schiff is sitting in front of me. And by the way, I'm a journalist. Adam, I ask questions of Democrats. I, I understand, and Republicans but every day. but but this is like an interrogation, right? So it's an interview. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. We this is witch hunt part two. Okay. The president I've said had, on the White House lawn I've yesterday. I sat here. For authoritarian three years. China should should investigate can, an American. Can I finish? You have told can me I many finish? times that China. Breaks international law. Is it acceptable do, do for a U.S. Me, president do I get a to chance investigate to talk America? Here. I've asked okay. the question. So my, my, my point here is I've been in this town now for three years. We went through witch hunt part one for two and a half years. Adam Schiff, sociopath, looked you in the eye and the American <laughs> people in the eye said irrefutable evidence the president of the Russia hoax. Now, hang on, let me just finish. You had, you had, you had your hectoring. Uh, now we have Adam Schiff saying that he doesn't know the whistleblower and everything. And now I'm we find what the it president does. said. I, I know that Adam Schiff has become a talking point for Republicans. The president my said point, on the White House lawn yesterday, is a simple one. China should investigate wanna, an American. You talk to the president about this. What I'm telling you is that this is a witch hunt that's hurting the American people. I mean, we have 3.5% unemployment rate. Impeach that. Peter, 
you and I have talked about how China is a bad actor repeatedly, and you and I have and both we agree on China. that. We've right? covered China for and, years. And would you would you grant me the fact that this president is the greatest president in history, standing up to China? <laughs> <No>. Standing up <laughs> to China. <laughs> Who else has stood up to China? All right, so there you have it. That guy uh, wrote a book called Death by China in 2011. Navarro did. Yes. Um, they keep so trying he's to. Got a lot uh, of credibility on the China hating issue. Um, but I, th you know, this is the type of stuff where Trump is like undercutting their own talking points on this stuff, and it becomes a little bit a uh, problem uh, for him. Um, here is uh, here is Trump now trying to distance himself from. And I would imagine there's got to be some somewhere there's got to be some evidence of Donald Trump. Maybe they maybe uh, Bill Barr is smarter than that. You only tell me what to do when I'm sitting right in front of you. And uh, we've already checked for recording devices. Uh, but you recall the question that Ka uh, Kamala Harris asked Bill Barr over the summer in those hearings. Have you been asked to investigate anybody. And Bill Barr was like, uh, asked, uh, well, yes, has it been suggested? Suggested somebody? I'm just trying to figure out your question. <laughs> um, here is uh, Donald Trump denying that uh, he ever asked uh, Barr to investigate anybody. I don't know, you. that you'd have to ask is, is the Justice Department investigating Joe Biden? Well, that you'd have to ask Attorney General Barr. But I can tell you, just as an observer, <laughs> what I saw Biden do with his son, he is pillaging these countries and he's hurting us. How would you like to have, as an example, Joe Biden negotiating the China deal if he took it over from me after the election? He would give them, wait, he would give them everything. He would give them everything. How would you like to have that? Joe Biden would just roll out the red carpet. He'd give them everything. So again, this doesn't pertain to anything but corruption. And that has to do with me. I don't care about politics. I don't care about anything. But I do care about corruption. And to have somebody take out a billion and a half dollars out of China, who's totally unfit. He's unfit to have him get a billion and a half dollars. To have him, and now I'm hearing the number of 50,000 a month. Now I'm hearing the number of $50,000 a month is very low. It's a much higher number that Biden's son was getting per month. In fact, it's much higher. And for him, to, and for him as a totally, for him as a totally unqualified person to be getting hundreds of thousands a month is very, very uh, sad. So, so again. Is the Justice Department investigating that? I just don't know. <laughs> He's such a good communicator. It's, it's he really is. I don't mean that at it's all. It's unbelievable. It's Yesterday like, he started out with like it's fifty thousand dollars and other things, and today it's more than fifty thousand. By the time he was done, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. Um, it's pillaging, man. Just pillaging, and it's bad for us. <laughs> it's bad. Sometimes for us. you pillage; it's good for us. Other times you pillage; it's. Bad I like for the us. idea how he's just a, an observer. Nobody's like I have. No, I'm just watching this. A news junkie, if you I'm will. I'm the center for response. He doesn't know material. if there's an investigation. He's just observing the uh, the investigation. I, look, I've been giving money to Transparency International for decades. I mean, I hired the best people, and I'm just an observer, but I think there should be, maybe. <laughs> I mean, on some level, when I see this type of stuff, I start to think they should impeach him, that they should just impeach him ra rather quickly or have insane. some type of rolling things or something because the more they let it hang out there, the more time they're giving them to sort of speed up their plan to sort of build this, this fake narrative. Yeah. Do you think that's the case? Uh, I mean, that's necessarily what they're going to do. They have to do that. Do you think the Democrats should be quick on impeachment? Or do well, what do you mean how quick? Like, just introduce it tomorrow? Well, I mean, as opposed to, like, let's get it wrapped up before Christmas or let's bring this thing into uh, the spring. Yeah, it is nearing the end of the year, huh? I mean, it's... I don't know how to do an impeachment, Sam. I've never done one before. <laughs> never, never, never put one together. Well, this is the first book you wrote, and you you did okay with that. I did, but writing a book is not the same as uh, organizing an impeachment. Well, of course, I wouldn't. I mean, different. is it catered? I don't even. I don't even know who to call for something like that. Was your book party? 
Was it? You were I there, don't know. It? Well, just go with what you've done. You know, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Uh, what do you think? I don't know. Rent a bell bar in Bushwick. Rent a basement. Open bar, yeah. What do you think? Do you yeah, there should be an open bar. Cleverly absolutely. named cocktail. Well, I mean, okay. So what's what's the alternate position that there should be a methodical case building and with with televised hearings? How many and something different? Like that? How many different uh, in, in articles of impeachment do you bring in from different things, emoluments, and these other issues? Well, uh, I, I mean. Originally, I thought that it it should be it should be wide ranging. You should have multiple committees doing the inquiries, and but directed towards one goal. That's going to be a a battery of uh, uh, articles of impeachment that the whole entire House votes on. Um, right now, I mean, I don't know how Nancy Pelosi intends to organize this right. process. I know she said a few days ago, we're, "This is just going to be about Ukraine," which. Then I didn't really agree with, but after the latest round of revelations, I think that makes sense just to have a, a kind of central clarity One on the matter. So the you've... concern is, though, you do that and, you know, that passes the House and there's a trial in the Senate and they don't remove him. And Trump says, there you go. You see, I was I was right. Nothing was wrong. You know, I didn't do anything wrong because, you know, I was acquitted. Uh that would make it harder to get him on the 300 other things, probably. Right. Like, you can't, you probably don't get another shot, right. especially if he's reelected or something. We're going to have a new impeachment hearings every month. On the first of the month, we're going to vote by the But that's last... also dangerous, right. isn't right. No, it? I because agree. that I just agree. means, oh, he has carte blanche to do whatever crimes that he wants, and he gets 46% of the popular vote and gets reelected, and uh, he's acquitted by the Senate, so he can literally do whatever he wants, which, honestly, that is the, teva- the de facto position right now. That is really the state of things. It's really how you resolve that dissonance between what your conception of the rule of law is, your belief that you live in a country where no one's above the law, and the obvious fact that, yes, there is someone above the law. Yeah. Yeah. And And if that, I mean, ideally, you resolve that dissonance by, you know, going to political radicalism and and articulating a theory of change. But I fear that it will ungovernable, if you will. Yes. But I fear that it's it's for for many people, especially like the the intellectuals and people who watch MSNBC. It's just going to go in the other direction and it's just going to become anesthetizing and and neuroticizing. I, I, I just want some good hearings where some people squirm. I want to see Rudy oh, Giuliani yeah, we all want the there, hearings. and that's uh, I think that it would be um, helpful and cathartic and, um, and and politically helpful. But, but we'll, otherwise, you know, okay, if this is if this is it, this is all you need, then yeah, wrap it up in November. Yeah, I go back and forth. I'd like to see what's going on with this IRS whistleblower. Frankly, that to me seems. Um, uh, pretty salient is well i mean you know you can't impeach him in october of next year that's not going to make any sense no i think you got to wrap this up by basically going into uh into the summer like you got to get this done by uh, the spring and uh people take a vacation for the summer and come back in the fall and you're talking about uh, this guy you know the republicans kept this guy from being held to account and i think maybe you provide you you do Various articles of impeachment because to the extent that uh, these congressional races and senatorial races are localized, you can also have your cake and eat it, too, insofar as this nationalizes the election. Did you vote to protect President Trump or not? And did you vote to protect him on this particular article of impeachment as opposed to that one? In Minnesota, you know, the idea that like, you know, maybe uh, you would enrich yourself by doing the hotels sounds a lot worse than maybe some other thing that might have more salience in 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 Maine. I don't know. I I, I think the you know, go with the moments, go with things like that. But as long as the 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 evidence is clear and the narrative is simple, because I, I think people who are even tuned out of this whole process they're still going to intuitively understand what bribery is, what what a quid right. pro quo is. I agree. Everything that's more ambiguous or just talking about colluding with foreign powers, like everyone's tuned out for that. Crap. Right. Yep, I agree. Well, listen, um, 